In the last video, we looked at how to evaluate the predictive performance or the accuracy of a decision tree. Now, it's important to understand that um, accuracy and prediction is one thing, but the interpretation of the model could be quite another thing. And this is because when we focus on evaluating the classification model, um, we're looking at how well it's target, how well it predicts the target or the label variable. So in this case, we're not really looking at how did it come up with that prediction? What variables, what features led to a highly accurate uh, prediction? We're looking at just the final results, whether it's prediction or recall or any specific statistics we're looking overall. However, when we're looking at interpreting the model, uh, then we're looking at the predictors. It's not so much the final predictive accuracy, but what are the factors that led to that prediction? Uh, is it age? Is it income? What are the things that eventually constituted a good prediction? So the focus here is not so much on what you're predicting as it is on what led to that prediction. However, that said, to be able to interpret a model, it has to be reasonably accurate because uh, trying to interpret a model that is inaccurate is meaningless. It doesn't tell you anything. However, the reverse is not the case. Um, a highly predictive model that has very good predictions might be very hard to, to interpret. They don't necessarily go together. Um, and that might be okay. In some business cases, you just want a, an accurate prediction, even if you don't know exactly how it came about. The One of the major paradoxes in business intelligence, especially with predictive analytics, is that accuracy and interpretability are usually in conflict. That is, the most accurate models, the ones that have the best predictions, are usually not that easy to, to interpret. And conversely, some models that are very easy to interpret, you can understand what's going on, might not be the most accurate. So they have to be accurate to some extent, but they might not be as accurate as some that are very difficult, very uh, difficult to interpret. So in practice, analysts often need two models as the final results of their analysis they'll have the model that gives the best predictive accuracy they possibly can get, which often is not very easy to interpret. And they will have uh, at least a second model, which has uh, acceptable accuracy, maybe not the best, but decent accuracy, but which is easy to interpret and can be translated into business uh, decisions. Let's go to Rapid Miner uh, to see how to interpret our decision tree. So if you double click in the validation tab, and let's go to the decision tree. Now we can see that for a decision tree, the maximum depth is four. So four leaves, and I'll show you what that means. Let's run the model again. So now we're not looking just at the accuracy and the performance measures. We're looking at the tree itself, and we want to make sense of this tree, see what it tells us. You can see it's very unwieldy, very wide, and it has quite a lot of things going on there. It's hard to interpret as it is. Uh, but here we have level one, two, three, four. That is a tree of depth four. So you, depending on the tree, a tree of depth four might be interpretable. And generally speaking, trees of depth three, four, or five are what you're looking for. But here we see even a tree of depth four is uh, hard to interpret. So let's go back to the design view and let's reduce the depth there. Let's make it three and let's run that again. So now, okay, that looks better. Now we have a tree that is uh, much uh, more manageable. You can move things around just a little bit. You can actually uh, zoom out and there. Now we can fit it all on one screen and it's easier to see. We have levels one, two, and three. 
So the basic interpretation of this, we start from the root, is the key variable or the most important variable is the number of people employed in the Portuguese economy at the time the offer was made for a term deposit. And we have on the right here that when the number employed was less than or equal to 5.087, and that's in thousands, so let's call that approximately 5 million people in the Portuguese economy were employed, when less than or equal to that were employed, then the most important thing that determined whether people said yes or no was how they were contacted, either by cellular, that's mobile phone, or by fixed line telephone. Okay. Then on the left here, we have that when employment was brisker, that's when there were more than 5 million people employed, then what mattered more was the month of the year in which people were contacted. That became the second uh, most important variable. So both month and contact are equal level of importance, depending on the level of, uh, of employment. So what we want to interpret for the decision tree are the leaves. Uh, for instance, if we take this first leaf here, this tells us that when the number employed was more than 5 million and people were contacted in the month of April, then they're more likely to say yes. And we know that it's yes because here it predominates as yes. And to know which color is which, you can see that when it's more blue, it's a no. When it's more red, it's a yes. And so simply you know oh, what the color coding is here. And if you wave your mouse over that box, then this little pop-up comes that gives you more of a breakdown. It tells you that specifically here, there, this leaf represents 28 cases when people were contacted in month of April and employment was greater than 5 million. And out of that, and that 28 represents 5.71 or nearly 6% of the data set. And again, that this is just a test set, uh, part of the data set. So you have um, that uh, just 5.6%. And specifically, 17 of those said yes, and 11 of those said no. That's what each leaf means, and can interpret each leaf that way. However, there's a very important question of how much confidence do you have in what the decision tree is saying? And first, I will point out two kinds of leaves in which you probably should not have as much confidence as you might think. So let's take the leaves that are predominantly one or the other. So here you have uh, this leaf here, which says that when employment was more than 5 million and people were contacted much of March, they were predominantly likely to say yes. So a nine out of 10 said yes, so that's 90%. That's very strong, yes, but there's only 10 people in the data set, which represents 2% who met that rule. That is only 2% of people were contacted in March when employment was more than 5 million. And a rule with just 2% of the data set isn't much of a rule. It's almost a fluke. And I would say in general um, that when there's less than 10% represented in a leaf, it's hard to have confidence in that. Here's another case. Here you have in, when employment is greater than 5 million and people were contacted in October. Well, they all said yes, 100% yes, but that 100% is just two people in a whole data set, not even 1%. So that's just a, a, a total fluke and doesn't mean much. So generally speaking, if it represents less than 10% of the data, you it's hard to call it a trend. So let's look at a case like this here, where you have a thicker bar, because the thickness of the bar indicates how many data points are represented. 
So the thicker bars like this uh, bar here represents 86 items and this uh, really thick bar represents 136 items. So looking at this one here where you have number of employed is more than 5 million people contact in the months of July and you have and this represents 18 uh, percent of the data set which which is a good number uh, however note that this says okay they predominantly said no but how predominant is predominant because 53 said no 33 said yes well that's uh, a lot of exceptions and it's hard to call that a rule when there's so many exceptions and that's like six to four so i wouldn't have that much confidence on such an as close split like that. And likewise, you have this here, when employment is more than 5 million in the month of May. Now that represents their pretty thick bar, like 28% of the data set. But again, the split is close to even. 86% said no, but 50 said yes with that rule. That's not much of a rule. There's just too many exceptions. It's too close to really call it a rule. Um, however, if you look at this particular node here, or leaf, you have this represented by the number of employment in the economy was less than 5 million. And they were contacted by cellular, that's by mobile phone, rather than by fixed line telephone. Well, this situation represents 21% of the data set. So quite a lot of people were contact, contacted by mobile phone when the economy had less than 5 million employed. And of those, 91 said yes, 11 said no. I would call that a rule that represents 21% of the people. So this is one rule that you can take away from the decision tree. Uh, that when the economy had fewer people employed and they were contacted by mobile phone, they were more likely to say yes. And that represents 21% of the data set. Doesn't answer, it's not a rule for everyone else, but that is something that you, you could uh, consider. So those are the principles of how to interpret the decision tree and make sense of it beyond just overall performance uh, statistics.